Good evening. I'd like to open up the regular planning board meeting uh, for tonight, for February 19th. Uh, I thank everyone for allowing us a slight delay uh, while we were we had a work session going on with our economic development committee. Uh, so I apologize for the delay. Going right on to approval of minutes. Do I have a motion for the minutes of uh, January 22nd? So moved. Second. Moved and second for approval. Any uh, questions, comments, changes? One comment. Chairman, Go. individually hand signed. I'm impressed. <laughs> Thank you. Anything else? Do I hear a motion? Uh, you did. So Excuse, excuse <laughs> Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Chair votes aye. Okay, we're going right into public hearings. The application of William K. Davis for property located at 485 and 487 Union Street, 495 Union Street and 2830 Willow Lane, where in final subdivision approval is requested for the subdivision one lot into three lots with the following. Lot 19 having an area lot area of 5,977.67 square feet and 90.82 feet of continuous street frontage off Willow Lane. Lot 21 having a lot area of 3,004.65 square feet and 39.74 feet of continuous street frontage off Union Street. And lot 22 having an area of 3,733.22 square feet and 49.33 of continuous street frontage off Union Street. And lying in a zone where a lot or a minimum lot area of 7,500 square feet and 100 feet of continuous street frontage is required. Said property is located in a residential district A and is shown in assessor plan 133 as lots 19, 21, and 22. Plot plan is on file with the planning department office and identified as 01, excuse me, 090103. Who would like to address this this evening? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is William Davis. I reside at 495 Union Street. Uh, we were before the planning board, I believe, in September. I'm not quite sure. We got uh, our initial planning board approval. Uh, we were directed to the zoning board where we received the variances um, and got approval. And now we submitted the final plot plan. Just so you know, it's July. July? July. Okay. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. <laughs> Want to try any other date? <laughs> no. <laughs> David, do you remember when we went to ZBA? Was it December? I thought we suggested that you might want to check our record before. <laughs> August. August. Yeah, you uh, went to the BOA on August 19th for Thank part you. of your uh, presentation for us. Had the property surveyed, had Alex Ross uh, create the document that you have in front of you, and we come now before you for final planning board approval. Okay. Now, Mr. Chairman, while the public hearing is open, uh, this plan does reaffirm the existing lot lines. The only difference is it reaffirms them better than they were affirmed in the prior centuries. Uh, they're a heck of a lot more accurate. So the changes from the preliminary plan are minor at best. The Board of Adjustment did approve the creation of the uh, necessary non-conforming lots. And again, the reason the department supports this application is because we are recreating lots rather than proposing new lots. If these were brand new lots being proposed on vacant land, the department would be supporting it. Okay. Any questions? Uh, Kelly, there's a common passageway on the um, upper oh, owned by the city. That's the city. Okay, that that really answers my question. <laughs> Thank you. It's uh, it's 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 quite a it's a used right away in the the these row of yellow townhouses on Lincoln. Actually, people have parking, um, and we act, uh, Willow Lane also uses it for parking. So it's it's plowed and maintained by the city, and it's, it's used quite a bit actually. Okay. Thank you. Okay. It's one of the reasons we now have street standards. 
Yeah, I'm sorry. It's why we now have street standards. Oh. <laughs> Any other questions for the applicant? Seeing none. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone in the public like to speak two, four against this application? Anyone in the public? Two, four against? Third, final time, seeing no one rise, I'm going to close the public hearing. What is your pleasure board? There were stipulations. Mr. Chairman, uh, move to approve with stipulations as noted. Thank you. Second. Moved and seconded. Any questions, comments, concerns? Seeing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Chair votes aye. B. The application of the City of Portsmouth, SAU 52, for property located at 50 Andrew, Andrew Jarvis Drive, wherein a conditional use permit is requested as allowed in Article 6, Section 10, 608B of the Zoning Ordinance for construction of an addition to the Industrial Arts Wing. All building construction will take place on previously disturbed area, existing pavement. The addition will be located within an island wetlands protected district. Shouldn't that be inland? It said property shown on assessor plan 229 as lot 3 and lies within a municipal district. Who would like to speak to us tonight? Good evening. I'm Brad Mosquito from Apple Engineering. We are here for a conditional use permit um, of which we met with the CONCOM last Wednesday the 11th um, and received a favorable recommendation. Uh, the plan before you here, I believe you have copies before you sell. Um, basically, orientation would be Summit Ave on the top, and the Jarvis would be coming in over on this area here. Um, the existing building is in the orange color, and right here is the addition to the industrial arts wing that would be on the rear pavement, uh, existing pavement at the rear of the school. The plans, um, the color plans that you have before you might show more clearly than this, in this distance. Um, there is a red patched area. That is the area that we are proposing as uh, new buffer impact um, due to the construction of this addition. The majority of it is out in the rear of the, uh, the school, half of which will be by the addition itself, um, and then the remaining portion is for relocation of utilities. We have, um, as part of the project, we will be coming for this board again as part of site plan review. Um, your information we did submit on Tuesday. We're scheduled for the TAC on, I believe, the 2nd of March, and we're before this board on 16th? Uh, 15th. Okay. Oh, March. 18th. 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 All right. We'll, we'll open two for people with dates tonight. <laughs> with that, um, open for questions. Okay, before I ask for that, I just want to say thank you so much for the color drawings. I wish everyone would do it. It just made it so easy to be able to follow this, follow this through. Thank you. With that, are there any uh, any questions for the applicant at this time? I have a question. Please. I'm assuming as these plans continue to develop, you'll show erosion control details on here? Right. As part of the um, site plan review, which is already submitted to the planning office um, as of Tuesday this week, we have a full set of engineering plans which will entail site plans, grading, drainage, erosion, utilities. Okay, so um, they're an upgrade from what we have before us. As absolutely. far as yeah, Okay, absolutely. great. Yes. Mr. Coker. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. When will we be seeing the uh, drainage and all of that? That'll be the next meeting? That'll be on site. It'll be part of site plan review before the TAC on the 2nd and then the 18th. You expect the in the next meeting? Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, we worked, uh, just a little follow-up, we worked with the applicant and the school department so that we could phase this project so that they would have the benefit of your input on the conditional use before they did the final design. Uh, but this project's ready to come to you uh, upon your action tonight. Okay. Any other questions? Seeing none, thank you. Oh, I'm sorry. No. I, I have one question that doesn't pertain to this application, but it has to do with the high school. Where are you going to take down the new building? Is that going to be grassed area or is it going to be parking? Um, as you can see right here, this yes. area is yes. the wing that was previously approved and to come down. Um, that's the area right here. That becomes all grass. Um, as you'll see before you coming in later stages here um, in the next planning board meeting. Because we do lose some parking here, there is a proposal for a um, two-tiered parking field 
up on that uh, top terrace. Thank you. Okay. Mr. Coker? Just one other procedural question. Um, I guess I'm a little uncomfortable granting conditional use permit without any drainage, but this will be in front of us next month. So mm -hmm. if the drainage is not, let's just say for the sake of discussion, not satisfactory to the board, um, we send it back for more work or deny it outright or? Correct. Okay. Well, I, I also but there believe is also the, the drawings in here. You looked at those. I also believe, though, the applicant can indicate that the amount of drainage will be uh, reduced over what the existing condition is, and that is the aim that we're looking at. So, right, but I guess my point is that if some of this drainage is, is going straight into the wetlands, just for the sake of discussion, this is an opportunity for we as a board to improve that drainage. Correct. And, and I just want to make sure that we have a shot at doing that. When you're looking at it for the site plan review, the drainage structures would be one element of that review. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? No, nope, seeing none. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else in the public who'd like to speak two, four against this application at this time? Anyone in the public two, four against? Third time, seeing no one rise, I'm going to close the public hearing. Okay, board, what is your pleasure on this one? No, there were no stipulations on, from this one? Anything came Correct. Out of? No stipulation. Last the minute. Conservation no. Commission recommends approval. And I think in your packet, by the way, you see their new approach to it where they're using a checklist uh, so you can follow through some of the reasoning of it. Mr. Right. Chairman? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Sullivan, thank you. Second. Thank you. It's been moved and seconded. Any discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I'm going to call the, public, uh, call the question. All those in favor? Uh, aye. Any opposed? The chair votes aye. All set. Okay, moving on to item C. The application of Barragosian Oil Company, Inc. for property located at 1166 Greenland Road where a conditional use permit is requested as allowed in Article 6, Section 10, 608B of the Zoning Ordinance for demolition of an existing building and canopy and construction of a 3,588 square foot single story building for use as a store and a 24 foot by 36 foot building for use as a car wash, refueling island with new canopies, new pavement, and fill within the inland wetlands protection district. Said property is shown on assessor plan 279 as lots one and two and lies within an industrial district. Who would like to speak to us tonight? Yes, Mr. Uh, Chairman, excuse me, has Mr. Hopley stepped down from this? Yes, I saw Rick was standing there. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. He's just outside the door. Uh, okay, I, I was confused because he had left left the. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure, Peter. <laughs> I apologize for the delay. Just a moment, please. Right. No problem. Oh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. My name is Malcolm McNeil. I represent the applicant with regard to this uh, proposal. Also here this evening is uh, Dennis Moulton, who is passing you uh, some uh, smaller reduced plans uh, for your consideration. Uh, Paul Kinney and Floyd Hayes, principals, and Steve Rickrick is here from Ranson Environmental, uh, who was here the last time with regard to this project. Some of you sitting there are probably asking, well, what, what are these people doing here again? And I'd like to respond to that in a couple of ways. Uh, you may recall that we were here before you on December 18, 2003, requesting a conditional use permit. Uh, at that time, we had been through the process with the Conservation Commission uh, twice, uh, who had recommended the, the conditional use permit. We had an expansive uh, hearing here with various experts presented by the applicant. However, at the end of that process, by a five to four vote, uh, this board denied the conditional use permit on these grounds. It says, quote, this vote to deny was based on the wetlands ordinance section 10-608B4, 
specifically the applicant failed to demonstrate that the proposal is the alternative with the least adverse impact to areas and environments under the jurisdiction of the ordinance. We tried to listen uh, closely to what your concerns were, particularly to the people who voted against this project. And additionally, uh, I'll represent to you that we've had intense discussions with the city administration after this decision on December 18, 2003. We have retained our rights uh, with regard to your decision of December 18, 2003. However, I think we have accepted your invitation and the invitation of the city to try and look at this again, to consider the issues that uh, many of you raised, and to make the plan one that uh, perhaps could obtain your approval. I'd like to, because I, I know that Councillor Farini was not here before, although I seem to recognize the rest of you as being here for the hearing. I'd just like to go over very briefly what we talked about initially. Thank you very much, Malcolm, because that would be proper because we'll be looking at this as a completely new application okay. before us. Fine. And, and I'll approach it in that manner. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Okay. With regard to this uh, site that I think you're all uh, aware of, the flight line uh, Sunoco, the present arrangement has an approximate 1,900 foot convenience store, uh, a, uh, a gasoline facility primarily for automobiles as well as trucks. Uh, however, there is also extensive uh, utilization of this site uh, by trucks, especially uh, at night. The use is a valid, non-conforming use. So as such, the existing utilization of the site uh, could continue in its present form. The applicant uh, wishes to upgrade the facility uh, significantly uh, to uh, improve the site, both from an environmental as well as a commercial uh, perspective. Uh, and uh, to do it in a fashion that is commensurate with 21st century uh, gasoline stations and appropriate facilities that go with it. So what I'm showing uh, you on this plan is basically the existing uh, condition as it is now. When we came in to see you in December of last year, this was the plan that we basically proposed. And that uh, uh, provided for a 3,900 square foot building it provided for a car wash. Importantly, however, the car wash, as a result of conditions imposed by the Conservation uh, Commission, is a 100% recycling car wash. So as such, uh, there is no residual product that comes out of the car wash that affects uh, the site. Uh, improvement of the canopies on the site and a reduction of the available area for truck parking uh, to 10 spaces, which we proposed in December, as well as various uh, retention ponds and drainage devices throughout the site that had been reviewed by various experts for the Conservation Commission and to some extent the City of Portsmouth. We also proposed some uh, berming around the site where appropriate. So we were talking about 10 parking spaces. We were talking about some increased fill in a 3,900 square foot uh, convenience store. In addition, uh, there were questions that were raised on more than one occasion about the septic system on the site and what our available options were. We made it clear in December that the option that we were going to pursue was a septic system itself. We indicated to you that the need for septic service is very nominal here. We're talking about uh, a men's room, a woman's room, and basically a small cleanup area. And there was not a viable option to utilize the private sewer line that goes through this site. Members of the Conservation Commission at that hearing testified in favor of this plan. Uh, they had reviewed the matter twice by that stage. There was no contradictory scientific evidence to anything that we offered at the hearing. Uh, there continued to be concerns that I'd like to suggest related to a few areas. The first one was, I think, a generalized concern that we think you can do a little better than this and that we'd like, to look at, like you to look at this again. There was also concern about the reliability of keeping the trucks where we said we keep them and uh, the ability of the city to enforce readily uh, our determination to make this site better. So our concentrated effort thereafter was to address those issues. So as a result of that, this, this December 18th plan was modified to create the plan that, that you should have uh, before you, which resulted in a reduction 
in the building that is being proposed from 3,900 square feet to 3,588 square feet, and more importantly, all sections of the building that are in the wetland setback were taken out. With regard to the parking area for trucks, we reduced the number of parking areas from 10 to 9. Additionally, and perhaps more importantly, we reduced the depth of the truck parking by five feet in the wetlands area so that we were further out of the wetlands area with regard to our proposal. <laughs> Similarly, in terms of the increase in impervious surface, we reduced that number by 4,781 square feet. And in terms of the fill that would go on the site, we reduced that by 3,000. 700 square feet. As such, the reductions in buffer disturbance was approximately 21.5% from the plan that was acted upon in December. In addition, because of concerns by relating to security, primarily expressed by the administration, I think we've come up with a security system that Tom Ridge would be proud of in terms of uh, Aranco Homeland Security. And I don't mean to be facetious, but what is being proposed here, and I think you have a plan, and I refer to it at the conservation hearing as the Great Wall of Aranco, is at the edge of pavement, there will be an area of sensitive uh, type of grass before you come to boulders of substantial size that then come to a Jersey uh, barrier of a little over uh, two and a half feet, which is connected uh, in the most sensitive areas of the site. In these areas where there is the greatest probability of impact and incursion by trucks in other facilities. As to the remainder of the site, there are boulders and other areas of protection that will continue on the site. Malcolm, I'm sorry to interrupt. Could you just bring your microphone over with you? Sure. Sorry. I have the engineer back there giving me the Mickey Mouse here. I can't hear you. That's fine. Maybe next time we'll come, we'll bring a hands-free mic and go from there. <laughs> so as such, the basic issue of, okay, you're reducing the number of trucks, you're reducing the size of the parking spaces, uh, how can we be assured that the, the trucks are not just going to bark to back into the wetlands areas, dump things into the wetland areas, or do other things that uh, some would allege have been the history uh, of this site? So in consultation with the professional staff here, we came up with this particular proposal that we think uh, works. I think it could work in, in an embassy, as a matter of fact, in terms of providing uh, security to the site in terms of setbacks, et cetera. Now, in addition to that, there were concerns about, well, what, what if you don't do what you've promised to do? What if you don't limit the truck activities, limit the areas of concern with regard to debris in the wetlands, uh, permit trucks to back into the area despite all of the restraints? So the discussion that we had in that regard was to establish what I'll call an enforcement easement. So in addition to the Great Wall of Aranko and the other protective devices, in addition to that, for an area of 50 feet back from the edge of, of uh, pavement that goes behind the Great Wall, there will be an easement to the city of Portsmouth that has been reviewed and uh, approved with very minor changes by the city attorney. And the purpose of this is to protect against environmental contamination to protect and prevent the parking of vehicles to include trucks, tractors, storage containers beyond the new edge of pavement, to prohibit the storage of equipment, materials, inventory, construction equipment and materials or any other matter beyond the new edge of pavement, to prohibit debris, trash, litter and other material or material beyond the new edge of pavement, and otherwise to protect the wetland buffer zone in environmentally sensitive areas in the easement area as shown on the plan. If there is a violation with regard to those particular criteria, the procedure that's been established in the enforcement section of the easement is that the city would put us on notice that the matter has to be cured within 10 days. 
If it is not cured, the city may instigate its own action to cure the matter and charge the developer for the violation. That was found to be satisfactory by the uh, attorney and uh, your professional staff. After making these changes uh, and running it by uh, the administrative staff here and running it through our own system, we took this proposal to the Conservation Commission last week. For the Conservation Commission, we're all friends now. It was the third trip in on this project. And as you may know, they approved the two prior plans. This plan was also approved by them last week. And if you were to read the minutes, the chairperson uh, said, and I think he was correct, uh, we voted for the other plans, but this is the best plan yet. And the only condition that was attached was that there would be an easement uh, around the site that was approved by the city attorney. So that, that was the vote by uh, the Conservation Commission. In regard to the criteria that you are to consider, the, uh, as contained in the zoning ordinance, that the land is reasonably suited to the use and the wetlands values are not adversely impacted. And the Conservation Commission reviewed this matter. They hired uh, Michael Cuomo to look at the project. There was no evidence that the wetlands values would be adversely impacted. There has been no evidence presented at any time by any expert uh, at any of our hearings that there would be an adverse effect on wetlands values. The second criteria is there would be no adverse impact on the wetland values of the surrounding properties. The drainage system, which was described at the prior hearing, is an, an enhanced drainage system that has been reviewed by Mr. Cuomo and others with regard to its efficacy, and it was found clearly, and there's been no contradictory evidence, the surrounding properties will not be impacted. In all candor, everything that surrounds this site is our, is our property on this side of the street. Behind this site is the turnpike. There has not been any abutter, as you know, that is, uh, those of you who have been in the prior hearings, who has come in and objected to this plan at all. The third criteria is the applicant shall demonstrate that alterations of the natural vegetative state or managed woodland area will occur only to the extent necessary to achieve construction goals. We have constantly attempted to diminish the impacts with regard to the areas uh, that, that are necessary to make this site, this legal non-conforming use, commercially viable to make the improvements that we intend to make. And then the last criteria is the applicant shall demonstrate that the proposal is the alternative with the least adverse impact to areas and environments under the jurisdiction of the ordinance. As I said on the previous occasion that we were here, the upgrade to this site is clearly going to cost in excess of a million dollars. There has to be some commercial activity on this site to sustain the upgrades that we seek. We're proposing 24-hour monitoring of the site with regard to no overnight parking and diminution of the number of um, trucks on the site. And I think we've provided every reasonable means of the city protecting its interests with regard to the promises that we're making with regard to enforcement. The cumulative effect, in my view, of what we're doing is, one, there is no contradictory environmental evidence with regard to any adverse impact on this site. There is no adverse impact on the Great Bog or the Great Bay. There is no adverse impact on adjoining properties. So then the question becomes, under all of those circumstances, is the site being developed in a manner that under the totality of the circumstances of a non-conforming use, is it reasonable? What the city has acquired in the interim because of the efforts of your staff and perhaps your comments is a lessening of the impacts that existed from before by at least 20%. Security with regard to the viability of the promises that the applicant is making with regard to the site. And a ready ability on the part of the city to enforce quickly by a recorded document the various components to, uh, to uh, protect the environment. So we, we feel under the circumstances that the plan has advanced from what you saw before, is protective of the environment, provides a reasonable use for a non-conforming use, 
will result in the upgrade of a station that I think all of us agree requires some upgrade, but it is being done not at a cost to the environment and not at a cost to the city. The experts are here, and Mr. Chairman, if you'd like, um, Mr. Moulton, to briefly describe the drainage again, uh, so, so you're comfortable with that? Yeah, it's, please, if we could. Again, we're looking at this as a new application, and that, that would only be proper. Good evening. Dennis Moulton with Molest Craig and Caldwell. I think Malcolm did a pretty good job of describing the changes uh, to the plan. But I would briefly like to check, uh, touch on a number of items. As Malcolm had said from the previous uh, time we had met with you, uh, the changes to the plan are that the uh, number of parking stalls for tractor trails can reduce from 10 to 9, and the length of those stalls can reduce from uh, 70 feet to 65 feet. We've also brought in uh, the grading uh, accordingly so that uh, we reduce the impacts into the buffer. Uh, another change has been made, of course, is this building has been uh, configured so that it is outside the buffer area. But the thing that hasn't changed on the plan is the stormwater treatment. Uh, stormwater treatment remains pretty much as we had uh, previously uh, indicated. Uh, it's uh, going to consist of uh, catch basins, which will allow water, stormwater to enter into a system uh, which will first enter a uh, oil and sediment separator chamber, the manufactured uh, chamber, which uh, will be under the pavement. From that uh, device, it will enter into what's called a wet detention area. The wet detention area, of course, has standing water in it. Uh, the wet detention area has a weird outlet, which will allow, uh, in case there is a spill on the site of some contaminant, will allow up to 12,000 gallons of storage of that contaminant uh, before it would, would exit and into the, uh, the next section of the stormwater treatment system, which is this dry detention basin. Uh, when the stormwater leaves the, the wet pond into the dry detention basin, it then again uh, will back up a bit as it, as it gets, gets detained. Uh, uh, contaminants, sediments, so forth will settle out, and then it will be released by this pipe through a riprap uh, section through a level spreader, which will then lead to what's called a vegetative filter strip, which is uh, a gently sloping area, vegetated uh, area, uh, which again allows some filtration of uh, contaminants, sediments, so forth. And from, uh, from that point, it will enter into the wetland eventually as it filters down. Uh, the current site, as it stands now, of course, has no storm water treatment at all. Anything that would be spilled on the site, anything any storm water that uh, leaves the site, uh, sediments, contaminants, runoff, whatever, uh, enters directly into the wetland. So this is a, a market improvement over what has been uh, out there before. Uh, additionally, the, the site is configured uh, such that storm water is forced into this area, whereas now the storm water flows in, in all directions and will enter the wetland whatever, by whatever path it feels uh, it can make. Um, Malcolm had touched on the, uh, the septic system. Uh, currently, there is a uh, uh, leach field to the rear of the existing building. Uh, part of that leach field is located within the wetland buffer. Of course, that would not be allowed under today's ordinance. What we're proposing with our new plan is to relocate the septic disposal area to the front of the building to this area. We've, uh, based on uh, test borings in the area, uh, soil data that we know, uh, the septic designer has determined that that area will be uh, acceptable and in, in, in use for a, a septic disposal system. So the septic would leave the building 
through um, the septic uh, tanks, of course, and then into the leach bed. Leach bed would be located entirely outside the buffer now. Uh, another item I'd like, just like to briefly touch on is snow storage, because I know that was a, an issue brief, uh, brought up uh, previously by the board. Uh, with the uh, use of the, the barriers, this one, uh, being six feet uh, back from the edge of pavement, uh, for smaller snowstorms, uh, we would use this area for, for snow storage. Uh, if, if the snowstorm was such that uh, the capacity would be above the height of that uh, Jersey barrier, then of course we would have to push it into uh, probably the uh, most likely uh, the uh, tractor trailer parking area where it would be stored temporarily until someone could, uh, until a uh, company could come by and, and uh, remove it by truck and dispose of it properly. Uh, one of the uh, questions asked last time, I think it was by, uh, by John, was uh, to clearly delineate where the impacts occur to the buffer. And this plan, I think, uh, pretty much uh, shows, tells the story on that. The gray area you see here are the additional impacts as far as paved area that will be added to the buffer uh, by this project. The Green you see here are the areas where additional grading would be required uh, in this uh, to, to accommodate the uh, differences in elevation needed to force uh, stormwater back into the site and, and do all that grading. This uh, brighter green area here is the area of our uh, proposed detention areas, which are the uh, allowed uh, grading and uses within the the protective buffer. I think that pretty much sums up the uh, changes uh, that we're proposing on the site. If there's any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Any questions? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just so I'm clear and for the record, yes. are there any places where stormwater runoff on this piece of property does not get caught by um, the treatment system? Yes. Could you delineate that, please? Okay. Due to the uh, constraints caused by needing the, the roadway here, we would have to grade up slightly in this area. So basically from the front of the canopy towards this direction, the stormwater would have to be necessarily pushed in this direction. Uh, and it would, it would flow from this side, basically down this way, and enter an existing uh, swale area, this catch basin down here. I don't think that's going to really catch much in terms of that runoff, but then it would uh, enter the wetland at this point. So there is a small, small portion there which will not be forced into there, and that's uh, uh, almost an impossibility to get something there to catch water and bring it in here because of the elevation differences. Okay, if I may, Mr. Chairman, I'd like to just, I want to make sure that I'm clear. Mm -hmm. From the upper portion of that diagram mm -hmm. there, here. basically where your hand is, is yes. where it's going to flow. Okay. Either, is that the, that's the break point, either that way or here. Okay. I'm concerned about that because that is where the, the, the Part of the truck canopy is over there where they're pumping. The, the truck canopy is, is Okay, so you're saying here. that that will flow down that, and all be That will all come back this way. Okay. The canopy itself, and uh, I don't know if Steve can probably talk this better than I can. Uh, I believe the canopy design is with a, uh, a trench to catch any uh, spills with, under that canopy area. Yeah. Okay, because because it, it, I just want to make sure that there's no, there's no contaminants that are going to leave this site and head into the wetlands. That's what I'm that's what I'm concerned about. Right, and that's that's our concern too. And uh, I think like Steve can probably uh, speak to the, the canopy construction better than I can. In in, t in due time, I'm okay. sure he will. So we'll, I'll hold the question until he gets until he speaks. Okay. Any other questions for Dennis at this time, Mr. Wilson? Uh, 
Can I assume that a, that a Cape Cod berm is just a work for some sort of curbing? Yes. Along the edge of, of the paved area? Yes. Cape, Cape Cod berm is, is a, a low profile curb. It's, it's basically uh, three to four inches in height, 12 inches in width. And so, so it allows uh, basically a vehicle tire to come up on it, but as soon as you, uh, you know, as soon as the wheel comes up on it, you realize that you're, you're on something and you steer away from it. And the Cape Cod berm is gonna be where the multi-ton trucks are gonna be, where their multi-ton wheels are going to kind of run up against it. Yeah, I mean, um, I don't anticipate necessarily that they'll uh, want to go in that area. I think that once they see numerous large rocks surrounding the site, they'll try to avoid that area. Certainly, I'm just thinking, I'm not thinking about the 98% of the truckers that are decent human beings and are, are, have had enough coffee and, and are driving properly, but mm -hmm. we, we don't plan for that. That's What I'm thinking of is, is that backing into that, they, they hit that particular you know, they hit that particular section or crush it or mm -hmm. something. If it's concrete curbing, there's no conversation, but I'm not sure what material a Cape Cod berm is made of. Generally, it's, it's uh, what's called bituminous concrete, which is a, a high-grade asphalt. Mm -hmm. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, right, good, George. Yes, yes, uh, uh, could you explain where the gas tanks are going underground? Uh, I think either one of the representatives from Moranco or Steve can answer that better than I could. Why don't we hold that question until uh, we can just finish up with Dennis and then okay. we'll come back to that one. Dennis, I got a couple questions. Uh, what's the total amount of fill that you're bringing into this site? Uh, in terms of cubic yards? Yes. I haven't calculated that yet. Okay. Um, Malcolm mentioned about a, a certain type of seed or planting around those boulders. Uh, it's, you been, just, it's been suggested to, uh, what's the name of the grass? It's a ribbon, grass. ribbon grass, I think, is a, is a common name for it. I'm not sure what the uh, technical name for it. It was, it was suggested um, by someone familiar with wetland uh, environments as a, as a wetland friendly grass species. Okay, and you'll, you'll provide additional information as oh, this goes is. forward? Yes, okay. oh, absolutely. I mean, certainly during site review, that will be uh, uh, something that will be specified. Okay. What, what's the depth of the... You, oh. Oh, Paul Kenny with a rank of oil. Uh, we're going to be checking with Dory Wiggins with uh, DES, and she's going to be specifying uh, the type of uh, ground cover that we're going to use there. Thank you. Thank you. Um, What's the depth of water in, the, in that uh, wet basin? Do you know what the depth of that will be? I don't see any, it's not denoted on the plans, and I'm just curious, your inlet elevation versus the amount of water you plan on having in there. If it's not on there, Dennis, it would be a uh, uh, foot and a half to two feet okay. in depth. Um, Based on the bottom of the pond elevation, probably around 38 and a half, outlet elevation of about 40 and a half. Okay. Um, the fill you're bringing in, is that going to be a structural fill or just a common borrow, or what's it going to be? Uh, for the most part, probably common borrow. Uh, I think we're going to have to look carefully at what we use for fill around the uh, detention area. That will be a critical critical area because of the, the detention that we're going to require probably, in fact, I know it's going to be a clay core um, for the uh, created berm that we're, we're going to have to construct. Okay, and I'm, and I'm assuming you'll specify the clay yeah. in your final plan? Yeah, I, I believe that's shown on the detail sheet. If it's not I didn't see anything the, that specified the clay. Yeah. No, on, on the, uh, the pond detail? I didn't see anything okay. that specified. If you can just make note of that. Yep. For, so that's all that I have. Thank you. Any other questions? Anything else for Dennis at this time? No. Thank you, Dennis. If you want Thank to you. continue with the presentation.
part of your presentation. You, you have privy to a couple of prior questions. You might just want to delve right into those. Sure. Um, my name is Steve Rickridge. I'm a professional geologist. I work with Ransom Environmental Consultants um, based out of Portsmouth. And uh, we are um, uh, Floyd's uh, environmental consultant for this site. Um, specifically been involved for a long time uh, with existing uh, problems from old old gas tanks that are long gone. Um, <clears throat> I think one of the questions uh, related to the uh, gasoline, or the, excuse me, the uh, diesel tank truck canopy, and, I, and I, I'm inferring that the concern was that if there were incidental spills, say, uh, overfills at, at, while filling a, a, a truck, um, you know what would happen with that? What would happen with that oil? Would it could it conceivably run forward and and uh, and, and work its way down and, and into the wetland here? And um, well, first of all, the current diesel islands do not have any canopies, so there's no protection um, from precipitation and how surface water would would affect uh, what's going on at those dispensers. Um, and as designed, you can see there's a substantial canopy there currently. Um, Aranco has it at many of their sites, and they plan to do it this site as well, been uh, installing concrete uh, apron around the, um, around the dispensers. They put in uh, grooves when they form that concrete, and those grooves are pitched um, in the appropriate direction for the site. In this case, they would be pitched backwards so that should a spill occur, a 5, 10 gallon, whatever kind of typical over, overfill, um, it would it would uh, be caught by those grooves in the concrete and be forced back on this part of the property. The um, the fact that there's a canopy overhead also allows um, you know a sufficient containment if, in the event that it's raining, so that, that those types of spills aren't flushed off the pavement as they currently could be um, under the existing uh, uh, development of the property. And and if that if those spills were to uh, to run, you know, in the worst case, if it, if it were to actually make it off the uh, grooved concrete and head back towards the back of the property, it, it would enter the drain system here, go into an oil water separator, and uh, and should be retained by that oil water se separator. That's the purpose of it and the function of it, and, and they're effective at that. Um, My question was also about the front because the, the yep. and Same. where where does it go and how can it possibly Come off-site without being treated. Um, my understanding is the same same situation will will apply at the front as back here. Um, Dennis had indicated that the topography uh, in, in front of this canopy isn't is in fact pitched down this way, but under the canopy going backward this way, you can see the topographic lines here. And they, you know, if you were to you look at topography, if you're familiar with topography, you look at 90 degrees to the topographic contour the flow would occur following my finger like this and, and go down into this area and, uh, and then into the, uh, into the retention well via the uh, drain system uh, go into the retention pond. Um, so in short, it, you know, overfills from the gas canopy would not run forward, um, but surface water in front of the gas canopy obviously is is going to run forward um, and, and discharge into this in, into this wet area. So protective of spills, but you know there's still going to be some surface water flow off in that direction. Is there any way to prevent that? Um, my my understanding is is no, uh, simply because um, of the uh, elevations that are involved. Um, you know, coming up from a lower roadway on Route 33. Correct, Dennis. Is that conditional? Is that the same condition as it is today as well? Yes. Yep. In fact, uh, currently, um, if there were spills anywhere on this property, uh, they were they are uncontrolled flow off the property, and the topography has not been uh, formed or created or, or uh, modified to direct it in any particular way. Other than you know, if you had a spill at the uh, at the gasoline pumps, it, it's running off this way um, via sheet flow. In the case of you know being influenced by rain or if it's a significant spill, uh, which I don't think they've had, but um, that would go right in straight into the wetland here. Spills up on this part, conceivably could they work their way up this way, and uh, 
and not not under the new plan, but under the existing conditions, and in uh, in going to wetlands up here, which uh, via a system of um, of wetlands and, and uh, stormwater drainage systems actually uh, go into great into great bog. Um, under the new plan, uh, all of this, all the uh, spill areas that you see here, potential spill areas that you see here, the gas canopy, the diesel canopy, um, as well as where the um, uh, fuel tanks are going to go, all that drainage is going to be directed back here and, and to the retention pond with the ability to catch it both at the oil water separator at this um, at this first um, retention basin um, and, and you know God forbid I mean it would have to be more than a 12,000 gallon release but um, if, if uh, in the worst case even even in the secondary content, uh, retention basin I believe there's a valve here before it goes to the spillway also so it's, it's almost like a, a triplicate safety feature and at the same time too those are brand new dispensers with the latest technology that if someone pulled away while something was in there it's Auto shut off and so forth. I'm assuming. Correct. Okay, state of the art systems. Uh, where are the location of the tanks? The um, tanks, as as they're currently situated, the tanks uh, uh, are located up up in this area and and partly extend into the wetland buffer zone. I think one or one or two tanks actually uh, are, are partly part way into that buffer zone. Um, under the uh, under the proposed plan, the tanks will be located here. None of them uh, will be in the wetland buffer zone. And I think there's actually a reduction in the number of tanks. Is that right, Floyd? Um, so it's a, it's a significant improvement. The DES has uh, provided correspondence uh, indicating that they fully support this upgrade and, uh, and actually commend Aranco for, for doing it because it's not, not required. Certainly the tanks are in compliance um, with, uh, with current UST requirements. Um, I should also point out one of the things that sort of a segue into uh, one of the things I want to talk about is, um, and, and you've heard me mention it before, but uh, there was a, uh, a a tank bed located up in this area um, uh, back in, as uh, recently as the early 1990s, and uh, and that was removed by Aranco as, as as a part of an upgrade of their of their facility, and uh, and we've been uh, working with the state to um, monitor and clean up a release associated with those old old uh, UST systems. Um, this construction project, uh, the development project, will give us the opportunity to, um, to remediate much if not all of the soil that's been impacted above um, state standards um, in that area. Uh, if we do not go ahead with this project, um, the, the physical um, features of the, of the facility as it exists, the dispenser islands and the piping, um, would prohibit us from getting a, a significant portion of that contamination out of the ground. Um, so even if we went ahead and did a cleanup, um, we'd only be doing a partial cleanup. This gives us the opportunity to go for a, um, to go after as much of it as the state will uh, essentially um, allow us to go after. Could, could you uh, educate me on that car wash? Uh, I was told that it's a closed system. Right. How that water's treated, uh, checks and balances that if something were to happen. Yeah, I, I'm not the expert on the car wash. I know that all of the water gets recycled. I know that there's, uh, you know, there's certainly maintenance of it required. None of it goes to the leach field, um, and uh, and it is constructed such that, uh, uh, you know, even drips coming off of the cars um, head back towards the uh, towards the car wash itself and, and the internal drain system for that. But it, it does not go to the subsurface. It does not go to the stormwater drainage system. Um, who's, Floyd, do you want to speak to that? My name is Floyd Hayes. I'm uh, one of the owners of Aranco Oil Company. Uh, how the car wash works is called a closed loop system. It's totally touchless. You drive your car in, uh, chemicals are sprayed onto your car, they're sprayed off with water. It all stays within the, gra uh, the confines of the garage. There are doors on each side that go up and down in the wintertime. On each end of the pad, it's a heated pad with a grater on it. So people waiting to get in go onto a heated pad, they go into a heated garage. And as they leave, they're on a pad that's also surrounded by a grate to catch anything that comes off the bottom of their car because there's some stuff that blasts underneath uh, the inside of the vehicle as well. That prevents any type of icing like you see at some of these older car washes coming out of driveways. It prevents all of that. The, if, if the system was to fail, in other words, if uh, we weren't there cleaning the sediment tank out, the system just shuts down and bogs down because there's no outlet for the water 
and or the sediment to go to. It's a closed loop system. The water that's gone, approximately 30 gallons of sprayed onto your vehicle, that 30 gallons has gone through a reverse osmosis system. It cleans the water, allows it to spray onto the next vehicle. So what's the maintenance as far as the sediment and the oils and all that? It's, the, if it was not a closed loop system and our other car wash, we clean that out once a year. With a closed loop system, we have to clean it out once a month. Okay. A company that comes in that takes out storm drain debris would also come to my car wash and take that 1,500 gallon tank and take out all the dirt right. or anything that was around your car that went into the grate. Now, those are, there's no place for that to exit. It will just plug the system and just shut the wash down together. Is that a double wall tank that, that handles that sediment or what is it? It's a cement vault uh, tank. It's not a double wall. It's a cement case tank, kind of like a septic tank. And there's two of them. One where it builds up and it spills over for fresh water to get RO, reverse osmosis. If that one fails, there's always a second tank, but the system shuts down after the first fill, so it's like a double catch. Are there any alarms on that if you were to get a, a crack in that concrete tank that, that would let you know that? How would you know five years from now if you got a crack in that concrete tank or not? Good question. Uh, I, I don't know the answer to that question. Yes. I, probably, I guess the answer would be just like I would know if there was a crack in my septic tank. But my underground storage tanks, I would because it's double wall and it's metal. But those tanks are not built for that. Mm -hmm. But that fills up again with sediment. So it was the crack. The dirt isn't going to be pushed out. Nothing can get through it. Well, would, you have, would you have oils in there? Uh, underneath the vehicle, but that would go in, back in through your reverse osmosis system. Only the solids go into that tank, and that's the first tank. So if that was the crack, the system shuts down to begin with. So it would not permeate the outside of that tank if there was a breach. When it's cleaned out, it's also inspected as well. When they do get everything out, do they take a mirror? You know, they they send a gentleman right into or whoever into the, that tank, and they clean it out, and they provide me with evidence before I pay them. Yes, they do. But at that time, if there was a large crack or something, then it would be, we'd, we'd, be we'd know that in the month. But if it happened the first day of the month, we wouldn't know it until they cleaned it at the end of the month, and it's on a routine schedule. Because I also have some uh, storm drains on the property that I'll have them do that at the same time as part of our maintenance program. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Coker and then Mr. Wolf. Oh, great. Go ahead. Oh, it's burning to me. Okay. I'm not used to that. Um, actually, I have a question more for the department. Um, the applicants received a number of var variances for trucks and being there on, on site. Is, is there any, any variances for the car wash, the, the, the truck wash in and of itself? The way well, this application is being approached, it'll go through the conditional use process first. Yes, it will be going to the Board of Adjustment for some reason. Okay. okay. Um, the reason why I ask is, I mean, in many applications that we see before us, we get an idea. I mean, it's not a purview to say whether or not someone can or shouldn't have a certain use on their property. So. By the same token, we can't say you should have this use. By the same token, we can't say we should have to approve this plan so you can have your car wash or so you can do this or so you can do that unless there's some overriding mechanism that I can see where that use is not only allowed but, but in, in implied more, more codified. I mean, in otherwise we're getting into... I think I can give you some resolution. I understand what your question is. Certainly. Uh, I think Attorney McNeil made it correct when he indicated this is a legal pre-existing non-conforming use so it can continue to function. I also think that what's been presented to you is the existing functioning of this use mm -hmm. is problematic I and mean, the city concurs in that. Mm -hmm. uh, what they're proposing is a uh, change in the use, not a change so much in the use, but a change in the site plan <coughs> where there are many benefits that accrue to the city mm -hmm. or to the environment for that. For example, the department is in support of this application. When it goes to the Board of Adjustment, it will stand on its own merits in terms of what the issues are that are, that are before the Board. And I know some of them deal with setbacks, for example. The only issue that's before you tonight, I would concur with Attorney McNeil, is whether or not, on balance, Article 6 is addressed to the satisfaction of this Board. So maybe to focus my question a little bit more narrowly, would you say that the car wash is an existing legal non-conforming use, or is it just the trucks? Um, that will be an issue that won't be decided by this board, okay. but will be decided by the Board of Adjustment. 
Uh, mm -hmm. If you wish, when you do your conditional use, let's say there's a motion to approve, mm -hmm. you can add a caveat that your approval, for example, doesn't impose any burden on the Board of Adjustment to make a particular finding. Well, what's before you is only whether or not this plan meets the criteria of Article yeah. 6. Yeah, that there, therein lies my difficulties. And likewise, mine. Um, you'll forgive me for being a skeptic, but I think the past history on this property speaks for itself, and I don't think we need to really go into it again. Uh, we've heard a lot of representations, with all due respect to the to the applicant and presenters, about this car wash, and all I have is words. I would prefer, frankly, before making a decision, to see some some information about the car wash. I mean, I, I've never heard of a 100% closed loop. It may exist. I don't know. Uh, but I would like to get some information on that car wash. That, that's fine. And that car wash really uh, does not fall within the purview of what we're talking about tonight. That's what we're, Mr. Chairman, I, I respectfully... Let me, let me... Go ahead. Really, those issues are going to come up under site review, and they still have to get through the Board of Adjustments for it. That's why I think David's uh, idea of saying, with you know, if we approve this on what's presented tonight in regards to a conditional use permit, if we add the stipulation that we're not, in, you know, forcing the Board of Adjustment to approve it as we see it with that uh, with that car wash. Do you understand what I'm saying? I do, but with all due respect, part of this application is this car wash. The applicant has made numerous references to the car wash. Why should we as a board ignore that as part of our process? It is part of their application and as part of their presentation. They're just giving us information about their property at this point. Um, I, I, boy, I wish the city attorney were sitting here. <laughs> Do you want to clarify him more than I ever? I think I understand where you're coming from, Don, uh, and I think the Conservation Commission was aware of that too, and that's really why the car wash is designed to be totally self-contained. But I think the chair is also correct. What you're looking at is impact in the buffer, and the car wash is not in the buffer. Uh, the board of points well taken. Yeah, well the taken. board of adjustment may have an issue with some other aspect. That's not your flag to carry. The only flag you're carrying now is whether or not, on balance, based on Article Six, whether this plan represents with respect to the buffer. The Thank you. That clarifies. And if the car wash were in the buffer, then we'd go to town. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That's why, for example, when the what I call a rainfall one came before, the issue there was you had a building that was in the buffer. And I think a good number of the board members here had an issue with it. And I think what Attorney Malcolm McNeil has presented to you is how this plan differs from the other one to show that they have listened to the comments from this board and responded to it by coming up with this uh, new plan, but I would say also very heavily revised. But just so I can understand this clearly, um, that should we approve the uh, conditional use permit, we will still be able to pass muster on the car wash and the specifics of the car wash Correct. on the site plan. If this, assuming this plan goes to the next step, it would be the Board of Adjustment. We'll just say right now for uh, yard, yards, uh, yard relief and a possible use relief on something. Uh, assuming it goes through the Board of Adjustment, it will then go to TAC and then to site review. So it comes back to you for your for the final okay. review. Thank you for clarifying that. Thank I, I, yeah, thanks. thanks. May I ask the Chair, I have a question for David. To further clarify that and ask, um, where you indicate that it's, since it's not within a buffer zone, it's not an issue, but if it, if it says that the planning board shall grant conditional use approval for any use within the buffer zone or inland wetlands protection district, which I understand we are in, well, then where does that bring us in terms of procedure? That's actually the 100-foot buffer. And so if you look at the, the submitted plan, it's the dotted line. It's the area that we're working in. It's not a whole district. It's it's that it's the buffer between the wetland. I understand. Yeah, I understand. Thank you. We're, I think what we're sort of getting here is the city has actually Yes, there's been a long history, but also I would also say there's been a long history of good cooperation, too, towards working towards solutions. 
this is probably the most investigated uh, car truck uh, truck stop in the uh, in the lower 48. Uh, and I think we have worked well with the applicant to address the particular concerns that we've had. And I think what they're trying to present to you is we're offering you a site plan that is significantly better. We're offering you a site plan that can be administered in terms of enforcement. We're offering you uh, uh, proposals as to how we will regulate the truck traffic and also to address other concerns that have arisen over the years we're addressing the drainage and the site improvements and the uses that are there and I think that's why it's really getting the overall review but you're really looking at the 100 foot buffer instance. for example we have issued building permits for the replacement of the existing fuel tanks by tanks that are of a higher caliber they didn't have to be replaced they're a higher <coughs> standard because they're not within the uh, uh, within the buffer area, we can issue that permit, uh, and that's a positive benefit. Okay. Any other questions? Any other questions at this time? Okay. I just I is that is that for your your, your presentation? If, yes. We'll just take general questions now. Yes. Okay. For general questions, um, I have one on the the dumpster itself. That is fully enclosed by fence. As I'm assuming that's the big yes. D. Yes, Mr. Chairman, it'll be stockade fence. Um, okay. And that is when it's when they're done uh, emptying it and so forth. That gate is closed. Yes. Okay. A utility pad that's right next to that. Is there? Um, I'm assuming for air conditioning units or condensers or anything going to be sitting on that. Yes. Uh, are there any? Um, cement ballards that are going to go in to protect those? Well, yeah, we'll, we'll add ballards for, for uh, protection because that is close to a uh, vehicle movement. Okay. The reason I bring it up is that the dumpster and, and pallet are in the in the uh, protection zone. Jim, so I have a couple of questions and uh, probably Mr. McNeil, the other gentleman should answer uh, thank, thank you for calling me a gentleman. I, <laughs> I think you've done a fine job. Oh, thank you. <laughs> uh, the last two times, or two times that you've appeared here, I spoke to you about the old Greenland Road and the piece of property that is city property. Yes. Uh, I know your company at one time tried to buy it off in the city, and the city said no. And I, I took exception, number one, of you're using part of that old Greenland Road of the city property, and now you're going to put down asphalt covering more of the city's old Greenland Road piece of property. And you're using, still using the excess way from that as an exit from your property. And the final question is, your truck canopy touches the Greenland Road line. And there's a setback in the city of Portsmouth, I think it's 10 feet on property lines for any building, isn't it? It varies. Property depending, line. It, it varies depending on what district it's in. Well, what would this be? How much setback would you have to have for that in order to be away from the city's property line? Industrial sidelines, 50 feet. How much? 50. An industrial side yard is 50 feet. Um, Mr. Sullivan, I, I wouldn't have felt like you were here if you didn't raise these questions, or, or I wasn't here. You know, that's I, the part that bothers me, really, is the third time I spoke about these things. Right, and, and your comments haven't been lost on any of us, whether it be us, the staff, or the administration of government here. You note how we put this easement area over the easement area of the city, which was at the request of the city itself with regard to our enforcement area. We, at the outset of this process, it was uh, indicated by Mr. Britz that the utilization of that roadway was primarily a site review matter, and we continue to believe that's the case, and that jurisdiction hasn't been exhausted by you as yet. We have had discussions with the city administration relative to the utilization of that roadway 
and we feel we have reached uh, a position where there's an understanding as to how it can be used. And what is shown on the plan, in our view, is consistent with that understanding. My only problem is, by you encroaching upon city property, yeah. is that once you make the modernizations and the improvement, it looks like it's yours forevermore. And until there is an agreement between the company and the city of Portsmouth for either money or a gentleman's agreement or something like that, then I can't vote for this type of a thing because I'm afraid that I'd be giving away city property. You're not going to do that in the first instance. We cannot acquire rights by adverse possession against a municipality or a public utility. Okay? We, just, we just can't do that. That's what the law is. And in terms of the issue with regard to the right-of-way, that issue will be resolved during the site review process, and the administration is very cognizant of what our position is. I'm aware of what their position is, and in my view, the issue will be resolved. David, do you want to kind of fill in? I think, John, too, I can understand the concern and also indicate that your concern will be followed through. What we have done is for terms of the conditional use, we're not going to really take a look at that issue at present. And Attorney McNeil is exactly correct, and I've conversed with Bob Sullivan on this. There are no rights that we will give up by this vote. Uh, the reason, although we have the easement, for example, crossing that, is let's say in the long run of things, uh, the city does not have any ownership there. The importance of that easement is that we have that protection. What I do know will happen is as this application progresses, the issue of the right-of-way will be addressed by city staff and it will be reported to you as part of a site review process if it gets that far. But even if we did nothing else, if, we have a le if the city has a legal right and we maintain there are legal rights to it, those will not be uh, uh, erased by any action of this board tonight. The reason I feel so strongly on that is that we have a problem that pops up every once in a while with paper streets. Correct. Mm -hmm. This here may not be a paper street. It's the old Route 101 or the old Greenland Road, and it's city property. And I just want to make sure that, number one, we don't give away anything. Uh, I think and if somebody is using city property, they should pay for it. I think if you ask the attorney uh, that the approval tonight did not represent any formal stance in terms of the disposition of that right of way, I would assume that he would agree to that so that we can continue right. that issue. I, I mean, just, just as to the issue that was raised with regard to the, the car wash, as to the extent of jurisdiction at this stage of this process, similarly, you are not binding yourself to a conclusion at this stage of anything more than the criteria relating to this conditional use permit. This is not a litigation matter over the ownership of the roadway, and more importantly, it's not a site review re resolution. Okay. My final question was the canopy of the truck. Um, what, the truck uh, it is subject to Board of Adjustment. That is one of the yards. They're going to have to go in and uh, demonstrate a hardship and meet the criteria of the ordinance, and the Board of Adjustment is formulated and charged with that task. And you sit with the Board of Adjustment now? Uh, Lucy sits, but she's not a voting member. We're there as advisory, which is probably I, the best thing. <laughs> I just want to make sure that my message gets down to the Board of Adjustment, too. Lucy, can you yeah, can share us? Thank you. Why, why couldn't we do a stipulation I mean, with the conditional use Because it's, it's, it doesn't fall under this purview. We can't. It's, 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 not, it's not something we're allowed to vote on. That's why we're saying we're taking his concerns, moving it to Lucy, and making sure that it's going to be taken care of. I, I understand that we didn't, it's not our purview, but I completely agree with John in the sense that it feels to me like what we're doing is we're approving what could end up to be a very tangled application where we approve something with all this and then a couple of other bodies come by and they alter things and then it comes back to us. I don't think that's a very efficient means of doing anything for the applicant or for us. But it is our procedures. Mm -hmm. They have to go through these steps. If the, if the Board of Adjustment gives them any relief that's going to alter this, we'll know. There is it will always come back to us, but if there is, if, but as I understand it, the relief you're, they're looking for with the zoning, and forgive me please for going into something that's with, outside of our, our, our purview this evening, 
is that they're going on side yards and so forth. They're not looking for relief of the conditional use permit that we're attempting to work and, with. And, and nor would they have authority, and, and we're not asking for that, okay? This, because this is an innovative land use control with regard to conditional use permits that is solely vested in you, for instance, if we took issue with your ruling, we don't go to the Zoning Board of Adjustment. We would have to appeal someplace else. Exactly. So similarly, the scope of their authority is, is, is limited to their usual authority. The, the other issue, whenever you have a project that requires multiple levels of, of review, is where do you go first? From our perspective in discussions with the department, it appeared to us that the environmental issues that would precede site review were matters of consequence on this site, and it appeared that that was an appropriate path. We could have gone to the ZBA, I presume, but it appeared that this was a major issue that needed to be resolved. The ZBA will consider this case on its own merits, in my view. I mean, if Mr. Sullivan wishes to go to that hearing and express his concern about the proximity of this site to city-owned property, he should come and say that. The one comment I would make is, if you wish to put a condition on your approval that the applicant must obtain all other city approvals, mm -hmm. sure. Yeah. And, and, and secondly, that. the other point is, if we go to the ZBA, and the ZBA for some reason modifies this plan significantly, we'd have to come back here. Mm -hmm. And further, you'd want to see it if that happens. Yeah. And remember, on, on an appeal of the uh, of tonight's, what we, we work on, is immediately back to us for conditional use permit. Mr. Coker. Let me ask a direct question, uh, Counselor. If one were to go to the Board of Adjustment and speak publicly at the Board of Adjustment, wouldn't it be a reasonable thing for you to do to challenge the impartiality of that person in, at sitting on this board? No because the issues are different. One is relief. Uh, I just, just want to make sure, because that happened well, once before, and it was not a very pleasant experience. Just ask me the question again, because I'm not sure I fully The question is this. Um, by the way, I share John's concern, um, and, and, and I'll, make, I'll, I'll tell him why, and then I'll address the question. Um, our purview has been stated clearly. It's the 100-foot buffer zone. Right. And there's something in that 100-foot buffer zone called the Old Greenland Road. So it is my opinion that it is, in fact, within our purview because it lies within the 100-foot zone. But having that aside, if John were to go to the, to the Board of Adjustment and stand up in front of the Board of Adjustment and say, ladies and gentlemen, I encourage you to look at this particular point. Just answer these questions. Why would you not then challenge the, the impartiality of John or anyone else that's, that stood up in front and spoke in front of those, uh, uh, those boards? I, I think it would depend on how he did it and what issues he raised. And if it conflicted with the issues that he would ultimately have to determine here, in other words, if it showed him a lack of impartiality as to issues that would ultimately be determined under site review, there may be grounds to discuss that. If they were issues that were clearly the province of the ZBA and phrased appropriately, I don't think it would raise a conflict. Okay. okay. Anything else? Any other questions? Anything else? Uh, and Mr. Chairman, the other thing I'd like to say, one of the things that we've attempted to do here, because we recognize this is a difficult project, we have attempted to address some of the issues of Mr. Will and others, and we've listened very closely to Mr. Coker, and we knew Mr. Sullivan was going to ask the question again with regard to the roadway, and that's been a matter of discussion with the staff. We have spent a great deal of time with the city and the city administration trying to come up with a project that I think uh, addresses all of your issues, and we hope you find that we have. Thank you. Anything else? Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public who'd like to speak to for or against this application? Good evening. Uh, good evening, uh, members of the board. I'm Martin Cameron, 469 Ocean Road. I'd like to speak, I guess, to the uh, project. 
Uh, seeing as how it's already installed and in place, we can't speak, uh, nothing you're going to do about uh, going against it. Uh, a couple of ideas I uh, picked up on just listening. I don't have the benefit here of the map, but uh, how far into the buffer zone does this property penetrate? I haven't heard an exact amount of feet. That it, Dennis, could you could you feel that? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, how how far does it penetrate into the buffer zone? How many feet? Yeah. Give you an idea. Give you an idea of the property itself. If you could put that right up on the board yeah. so the folks at home can still see it, yes. we can okay. maintain that. Thank you. The property itself is nearly 20 acres in size, and it runs down Route 33 and, and is abutted on the other side of I-95. So this entire area is, is, the, uh, is the site. This is um, 1 to 300 scale as opposed to 1 to 20 scale, which is shown here as the blow-up of this small area of the site which is developed. So essentially the entire, most, almost, let's say 80% of the site is wetland. The buffer itself is delineated by this line. The additional encroachment is indicated by this darker gray area outside of this lighter gray area. So that distance there would be probably the greatest point Thank you. Color in, the neighbor, in the neighborhood the of 40 feet. I think your color markup at the end one was a very good indication of what, yeah. what you have going on. Yeah, this one I think shows it clearly that you know the widest part of the encroachment by, say, pavement would be 40 to 50 feet in there and then some additional encroaching by, by grading. Okay, so uh, then basically um, the wetlands, there's no protection here whatsoever. I mean, we're, we're completely into the wetlands as far as that goes. So, uh, so the build, the build we don't have any protection there whatsoever is from what I can see. I well, think the structures and so forth are all not within the within the buffer zone. But all the back parking Wrong. lot and the projected parking lot and all of that fill area, that's all going into the wetlands. We're not all we're not the, talking about the buffer zone, we're talking about the wetlands itself. No. 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 All of all of that uh, has been that's being paved is being directed into a uh, treatment swale and a treatment uh, system uh, that they've been describing this evening. But even where, I mean, where it's being paved and so forth and being treated or whatever, it's still in the wetlands. No. No? It's in the buffer. It is? A, it's all okay. It's chairman. about 75 feet deep in the wetlands okay. buffer, and it's okay. probably the deepest point. If I may? Mr. Chairman, I, I appreciate your concerns, and I share your concerns, and I've been for, for years very cognizant of the wetlands. What you have here is a situation where, you're familiar with the property. I oh, assume. yeah. Nothing. You know where the trucks back up now? They yep. can back up literally to the wetlands and throw stuff in and do whatever they want to do. They can drain their transmissions right onto the ground, and that goes into the wetlands. What these folks have proposed is, and I think just speaking in rough terms, to pave all of that area and then essentially direct all of the water runoff into a right. treatment system which then goes into the wetlands and according to the testimony of the engineers that what goes into that wetlands is going to be about 90 to 95 percent clean and I, as much as I share your concern I think it is truly an improvement over what was there before because I went out there and walked that property too and it, it's pretty disgusting um, no, I uh, gathered that uh, that uh, with what we have now, um, the uh, project would actually would be um, 
an awful big improvement over the present situation. You bet. Absolutely. We'll have the wetlands will actually have more protection than what we have now, which is uh, zero, just about. Yeah, yes. yeah, you're absolutely right. You're absolutely okay. Right. So I gathered, I did gather that. So I said, well, uh, that's why I said speak to it, not so much against it, because uh, it would be an improvement, and we'd be better off, and we'd we'd have more control. Uh, what uh, I something else I thought about was. Um, are there, has any monitoring being, uh, uh, has been done already uh, to establish a standard? And if a monitoring, uh, a testing hasn't been done, I would uh, like to see the board consider that so that we have a base to work from. In other words, uh, tested for nitrates, hydrocarbons, uh, sulfates and uh, all of this mat type of matter so that you have a base established before uh, the project is completed and then this could be done in conjunction with our city environmental officer and then say maybe a, in a period of six maybe every six months or whatever is uh, would be a good figure to come up by the environmental officer to go ahead and uh, Monitor, check those. You could install permanent monitors, or it could be done uh, by the environmental officer or an independent firm, say on a yearly basis, so that we have a check at least annually on what is happening, so that everything we have some control over everything. Uh, I would really like to see the board uh, consider that as part of this. Uh, project. Uh, okay. All right, that's uh, basically uh, my biggest concerns. I wanted to establish, uh, like I said, I didn't have the benefits of the map and so forth, so I did want to see what we were dealing with, and I did gather that this really will be an improvement to the present situation, and uh, we can all appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anyone else in the public like to speak to, for, against this application at this time? Anyone else in the public to, for, against this application? Third time, seeing no one rise, I'm going to close the public hearing. Okay. Uh, before we go into other issues to discuss, if we can get a motion on the, on the board so we have something to talk about. Um, yeah, actually, I'd like to make a motion to deny the application. And I think we have to at least hash this part of it out so we know it uh, as the board. If I don't think this motion will pass, but I'd like to get a second just for purposes of discussion. Second. Thank you. Um, one of the issues I have with this application is last time around, the, the only real purview we have are the four criteria uh, based in the uh, wetlands ordinance under section 10608B. Number four simply states, applicant shall demonstrate that the proposal is the alternative with the least adverse impact to areas and environments under the jurisdiction of the ordinance. It's very simple and straightforward and while the applicant has certainly done his work, it's not our purview to decide how much of not only is that our purview to tell the applicant what they should do with their property, but it's also not our purview to say that this is, an, that this is the amount of the applicant, that we're actually keeping them from doing something, uh, keeping them from having one improvement or another. I think the simple criteria we have to go under is can this business expand and have the least adverse impact? And when I see this application and see ooh, 18,989 square feet of additional impervious space, if there was a spirit and an intent of this ordinance that was being violated, I think that's it. I certainly appreciate the applicant's improvements on the site. I think underlying just you know, improving a gas station that caters to drivers here on the road there's too much additional items on the site that violate that phrase, least adverse impact. 
above and beyond what other boards do, above and beyond what other purviews, that's not my concern. My concern are those three simple words, and I simply don't think this application meets those three words. Any other discussion? I'm, I'm going to be voting against his motion for the mere fact that although there's an increase in impervious area, I think the stormwater treatment far exceeds the, uh, the increase in the, in the impervious area. So I think from a, an environmental and a stormwater standpoint that this proposed plan is a significant upgrade. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I likewise, even though I second in the motion, it was for discussion purposes, I'm going to be voting against the motion to deny, although I do have to say that occasionally there are applications that come before this board which you really just hate because it's just, it's just you're not comfortable with it. And I am not comfortable with this one. I appreciate pulling me back from the edge and focusing me on the 100-foot buffer zone, because I, if I can keep my eyes on that, I think I can survive this one. I think the site review, at least for this board member, is going to be much more detailed, and, and that one is going to be the one where I spend my time. So I, I understand Raymond well, and I, I hear where he's coming from, but I think John also hit it on the nose. This is a tremendous improvement over the existing uh, a piece of property, even though it's self-inflicted in most instances. The history is not good on that property. And I think I can't speak for anybody else, but I'm going to keep an eye on it if the thing passes, because <laughs> I want to make sure that, that everything is done that they say they're going to do. So I'm going to vote to uh, vote to uh, vote against the motion to deny. Any other discussion on the motion? Seeing none, I'm going to call the question. All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Opposed. Opposed. And the chair is opposed. Okay, that, that is, does not pass because you have to, and we'll have to take a new motion because we'll have to, uh, you do have to have one in the affirmative. Right. So, is there another motion on the table? Mr. Chairman, um, a question before the motion or after? It's up to you. I'll take a question. Um, some of the concerns that, that I have, I think you may have touched on, where you mentioned the phrase something to the effect that uh, we don't mean to construe that the Board of Adjustment should take any actions one way or the other, however that was phrased. I want to make sure that it's very clear that we are merely talking about, let's keep our eyes on the prize again, the 100-foot buffer zone, and that's it and let them you can do it uh, one of several ways or two two ways uh, attorney Malcolm McNeil uh, recommended for example that it be subject to all necessary approvals that's good another one though would be that this board is approving or acting on a conditional use application and this approval should not be used or construed by other boards as forcing, <coughs> forcing a positive review I like that one better <laughs> Okay, thank you, Mr. Chairman. And just sort of a follow-up, um, probably another general question. It, it's my understanding that we're voting on the conditional use as a as a principle of the conditional use part of the permit, and not even the design of this stormwater retention and or treatment at this time. Correct or the bollards at this time. Correct. I mean, that's all great information, but really that approval will come at site review or, right. or modification or denial or whatever. And if you think about it, it makes sense. Right. I, I, I yeah. just want to make that clear. If there's a change in something that affects drainage, then you're going to want to look at it again in terms of whether or not it affects your conditional use. So you retain yeah. final authority. And John had a good question about quantities in the retention pond. John Sullivan, excellent. I was going. I've got my plan shaded because Mr. McNeil represented there were no abutters around the property. I was going to challenge who owned the old right away. Beavers and turtles. And uh, no objecting about it. <laughs> also, uh, this project probably uh, I'll be discussing about um, on-site special inspection. But that's again down the road. Okay. Do we have a motion, Mr. Sullivan. I would like to include also in this that 
We don't have a motion yet. Mr. Chairman, perhaps we should have the motion. Yeah. 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 I'll, I'll recommend like approval. I'll make a motion to recommend approval as stipulated with discussion to follow. With, with stipulations? As indicated. As indicated? Okay. I'm going I'm to have a couple more. I'd like Me to too. Okay. Chairman, I'd like to add a stipulation that the plans. Okay. Um, before we do, Mr. Sullivan has, 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 has seconded and has the floor. I, I like the concept of the monitoring wells. <clears throat> I think that especially where the pavement hits the road close to the drainage and so forth, there should be some way of monitoring that element. I'm not so much concerned in the summertime with the gasoline because I think the gasoline would evaporate before it got from the pumps down to the to the bog, but in the winter time with the water flowing and everything else, um, we should have at least one down in that corner. If I, well, if, suggest, if I can excuse me, sure. if I can just interject on that. Um, from the team, we had currently I counted you have two monitoring wells on site and the condition and when we're <coughs> when we're set, how many will be will there be? Steve Rickrich, um, answering that if, if, if you'd like. Please. Um, the exact number of wells, I cannot pin it down, but we have at least six or seven on site. Currently yeah. in use, yeah. so we can get a, you can get a baseline well, from. Well, we, we, we monitor actively, I think, four or five wells, There's two or three that are not actively monitored at the request of the state. The state sort of zeroes in on exactly which ones they think are critical. Okay. Um, in part based on our recommendations as, as a geologist and hydrogeologist. Um, they are monitored twice a year uh, under a groundwater management permit application and they will be monitored until ambient groundwater standards, which also are the same as drinking water standards, have been met for volatile organic compounds. So the types of contaminants that would be associated with gasoline and diesel fuel. And after construction, do you anticipate the same number of monitoring wells in the, in the same locations to continue? If, if any of the wells that are required to be monitored under the permit are destroyed in the process of construction, they will be required to be replaced by the DES at the owner's expense. And that monitoring, as I said, will go on until ambient groundwater quality standards are met actually for two consecutive rounds of sampling. So. We sample in the spring and the fall, which is the case. We'd have to have a clean round in the spring and a clean round in the fall um, in order to essentially stop monitoring under the state's program. That's not going to happen for a while, um, years. So you will have a lot of baseline. You know, we have baseline data. We have years worth of baseline data, and you'll have years going forward of uh, data as well. And part of the process that you're going through with the city as we're going uh, along with this, is that provided to the city and to the uh, at all? The city, or can it be made city, available to yeah, the city? Yeah, we could certainly make it available. The city has record of the permit application. That's required um, by statute, by, by regulation, um, by state regulation. Um, and we can easily provide copies of the, uh, um, of the uh, data submittals and annual summary reports, which are the deliverables that we provide to the state. That's not a problem. Thank you. Mr. Coker, I'm sorry. And go ahead. Just to briefly speak to the motion, um, while much of the discussion here this evening has been quite germane and interesting to the issue, uh, the big picture issue, this is, a, I think, a narrow issue. We easily meet the criteria and procedurally speaking, site review questions, many of which we heard this evening, I'll look forward to in the future, but I don't see as being necessary this evening, and I intend to support this. Thank you. Mr. Parker. Um Mr. Cuomo's letter of 16 February 2004, um, item number one, my report of 30 September recommends construction and post-construction monitoring by a third party to ensure that the measures proposed to protect water quality and the wetlands are implemented and maintained properly. I would like to see that as a stipulation. That would actually fall under site review. Okay. Good. Thank you. Okay. There's uh, one of the stipulations I have to add is that the plans uh, indicate where the fuel tanks are going, where the new fuel tanks will be installed. 
where the new fuel tax will be. Okay, is that agreeable to the maker of the motion? A second? Okay. Uh, I had a couple as well, if I can add for stipulations. Uh, one, just a stipulation that, that was already requested on the snow removal. Um, two, we have the, the it's a ribbon grass uh, that we're talking about around the boulders. Uh, three is that we get maintenance reports on the swale uh, be provided to the department, um, so that would be the, the DPW. Also like to add also the maintenance of the small swale along the front that, that just be kept maintained free of litter and so forth. I understand it can't be built for all this as per the discussions we had tonight. If those are agreeable to the maker in the second. They are. Thank you. Let me just ask a clarification. I think what you meant by snow removal was the uh, indication that the snow would be removed from the site. Removed so from a note the site. added to the right. plan. Not snow storage, snow removal. And as discussed tonight, for small storms, they were going to have the small storm, but right. once it got to that level above the, the Jersey barrier height, it would be taken off. Mr. Mr. Chairman, just a, a quick question. You said the swales, the, your, your the stipulation. And the small one that they're talking about that they're going to have that has to be used. Would you have any objections to including the, the uh, treatment ponds, the, the, the wet? Yeah, that would be part of this. Yeah. You include that yeah. in the swales? That's, yes. Okay, thank you. Mr. Chair, actually, more like a question of clarification. Can I assume that the bituminous concrete Cape Cod berm, that's more of a site review issue as far as drainage calculations and situations as yes. far as if they could get damaged versus a you know yes. concrete curve. Okay. Thanks. Anything else on this side? One last question. I don't know that this is in the nature of a stipulation, but it might be helpful to ask the city attorney to indeed offer that adverse possession. City property cannot be adversely possessed, and, yeah. and that's a sort of a black letter statement, but it'd be nice to hear it. When we come up for site review, I'd like to request to the city manager be available. I mean, excuse me, the uh, city attorney be made available to us. Certainly. Thank you. Is that? Thank you. Perfectly fine. Perfect. Anything on this side? Anyone else? Question for the, for the attorney, is that reasonable at this point? No. No, not really. <laughs> Anything else? Okay, going to call the question. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The chair votes aye. You have your approval. Thank you for working with us. Uh, thank you for coming back. I'm glad you came back sooner than later. Yeah. Okay. Okay, moving on to uh, new business, if I could, please, board. Uh, Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, let me give you an update on uh, Public Service of New Hampshire. Can I read it in first? Certainly. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Under new business, I uh, would like to get a schedule, please, on the uh, special planning board meeting we're going to have to hold on the PSNH as part of the uh, site review process. David, would you like to fill us in on that? I certainly would, sir. Thank you. Uh, PSNH has been in contact with us and they are working on, on uh, providing us the board with additional information. At the present time, because of the need to get the information out to the board, we think uh, they've asked that their schedule be allowed to slide a little bit. So what I'm asking for is for the board, because of the scope of this project, uh, that we'd be able to set a special meeting uh, sometime in April and it will probably be on a Thursday. I'm just looking for flexibility to confirm with the chair a meeting date so that we can keep that application going. Uh, at the moment it is scheduled next before the Board of Adjustment on March 30th. Uh, yeah, March 30th. And there may be a TAC meeting prior to that, but the Planning Board would probably come in in April. Yes. Uh, so, if, if we're gonna, do you need a motion? That we'll no, just, I think it's So, we're going to work out the date. Just stay away from Holy Week. Yes. We will be. <laughs> Which week is that? Uh, Easter, Easter, Sunday is, is, Easter Sunday is the 11th, and you've got uh, the week before you've got the Jewish uh, holiday. So, our regular yeah. meeting is during Holy Week. No, no. A no. regular meeting is, is the 22nd. No, no. 15th. 15th? Third, third Thursday. 15th. Yeah. April. 15th. April. Oh, 
That's the week, right? It's yeah. April. Holy, April. Holy Week is April the no, 4th. 15th, thank you. The week before Easter is the Holy Week. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Um, we also have one more before, right after adjournment, if we can have the, the members of the planning board remain. Uh, we just want to get a new photograph for our website, get that out. I will just take, I will just take a moment. Also, everybody has received a copy. Um, I requested that everyone have a copy of the Simplex. Okay. I'm also going to ask the city uh, attorney to spend some time with us just to make sure and everybody is understanding. The Simplex uh, decision is one that gets thrown around a lot. We have some new members on the board. I just want to make sure we have an opportunity to everybody ask their questions and make sure you understand this. This is, by the way, just to add a little fuel to it, this is a very significant decision and it is empowering to the ability of the city to regulate land use through its bylaws. So this is an important case. So. With that, unless anyone has anything new. No, just a point of order, uh, yes. Mr. Chairman, was was the setting of the meeting the subject of a motion? No. Or was it just a okay. just general information? Uh, Mr. Chairman, quick note, um, question. We included in our packet were some letters from the Department of Environmental Services and Congress. Are these just for our information? Informational only. Yes. Uh, Mr. They, are, they each represent a project that you've seen through tax, so you're now seeing it moving on to the next stage. So they may ring with you. Right. Mr. Wolf, Mr. Chair, um, some months ago we, we passed a street change name for Pearl Street to Martin Luther King Way that has subsequently been tabled by the uh, City Council and a, a committee has been formed to which I have been appointed um, to determine whether or not the City wants to do that or find some other way of honoring Dr. King. Um, if for whatever reason the board has any instructions or recommendations beyond maintaining the same uh, street name decision that we had some months ago, I'd, now's the time to tell me. Okay. Just uh, a point of order, the city council did not table it or refer oh, it to the committee. I'm sorry. Sorry. I stand corrected, Mr. Green. Thank you. But whatever the committee does, it's coming back to the board before the Actually, that's the issue. As far as we understand, it's coming back to the council first. Is that correct? It'll come back to the council, but it'll... It should, unless the council chooses to do another name other than either the existing name and not have the name change or go ahead with our recommendation of the name change. Otherwise, if it's one of those, if it's something other than one of those two, it will have to come back to us. And also, just to remind the board, you've made your recommendation. You've done your role. <laughs> now, <laughs> Mr. Will, Mr. Will is representing the committee, not the planning board. You've it, made your it, Exactly. I did want to make sure that the board was aware of that. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Sir, well, no. it should come back to us, then, if, if he's representing the board, and if it's anything he's different. Not, he's, he's not representing the board. board. He's, he's representing the board. He's, he's, he's on the board yeah. for right. a difference. So the private is correct. This is a unique opportunity. We've got you all here so we can get your mugs. Yeah, we're going to take pictures. Oh, oh. Oh, motion to adjourn? No. Uh, motion for adjournment? So moved. So moved. Also, while I have all the I, yeah. members here, does anybody not have their city ID card? I don't have one. Okay. Oh, you well, lost it again. Well, we need to make sure we get photographs for you. Yeah, that yeah. 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 Yeah.